it as soon as we start. Yep. Just a, uh, a couple notes uh, for today uh, while we're waiting on Notre Dame student athletes. We'll go 135 with Notre Dame student athletes, 155 with Mike Bray, 220 West Virginia student athletes, 240 Bob Huggins, 310 Villanova student athletes, 330 Jay Wright, and 355 Wisconsin uh, student athletes, and 415 Greg Gard. Um, the locker rooms will be open concurrent with the time that the coaches and student athletes are in here. Okay? Okay, we're joined by Notre Dame student athletes Bonzi Colson, Matt Farrell, Steve Astoria. Gentlemen, good to have you here. Um, same format as we've used the last couple of days. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Please state your name and affiliation. And if you can, direct the question to who you'd like to answer up here on the dais. So go ahead and get started. Bucky Gleason, uh, Buffalo News. Matt, uh, the other day, Mike Bray said that you were better than Bobby Hurley. Uh, at, kind of chuckled even just now. Can you, what was your response to that? Uh, how do you take that praise? Um, it's kind of crazy to hear from me. You know, that's, uh, the Hurleys are unbelievable uh, coaches. He's an unbelievable coach. He was an unbelievable player. So I take it as a huge compliment. Um, I don't know if he's right, but uh, I'll obviously strive to be, uh, try to be better than him or uh, try to be even as good as him, but he was an unbelievable player and he's an unbelievable coach now. So uh, this is Coach Bray, uh, you know, kind of relaying the relationship that me and him have. So I take it as a huge compliment. And this is also for you, Matt. Uh, John Worrell with the Associated Press. How have you made the adjustment? to uh, being a starter this season and, and the fact that you've been efficient with, with the ball, what, what have you kept in mind this year as you've helped lead this team to this point? Just uh, maintaining the same confidence you know, that I played with when I, when I first got my uh, start in the NCAA tournament last year, just uh, playing the same way I do, um, sticking to what I know, and then playing with these guys around me really helps, you know, playing with the guys that you know, I really want to play for, and I think that makes a huge difference. You know, we got guys that want to play for each other, and uh, they make me better on the floor. Um, and just the culture of this program, you know, it, it kind of all worked out. So I just it was all good vibes, you know, going forward. So I just maintaining that confidence and uh, trusting the system and trusting the guys around me. Follow up, John. And just as a follow up, Matt, as well as you played um, during, during, especially during that one stretch in the middle of the second half yesterday with the steal, the, the feed, and in the three-point basket. You were visibly disappointed as you were walking off the floor um, after, I guess, you know, the, the, you know, missing a couple of shots there in the final 25 seconds. How do you use that to fuel yourself moving forward? You guys won, and maybe you, you weren't at your best in, in some ways. Yeah, uh, personally, you know, I feel like I got to be better down the stretch. Um, take that hard, you know, I got I to gotta make that free throw and I got to make better decisions down there. And I don't think if I was upset because, you know, we won. So I'll always be happy we won, but these guys picked me up um, doing that all year. Uh, we do that for each other, but just use that as motivation, try to get better the next day. You know, that's, that's the good thing about basketball, man. There's always another game as long as you keep winning. You go all the way in the back. Justin Jackson with the Dominion Post. I have a question from Matt again. Uh, uh, two questions. Uh, one, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of assumed that today's college players are, are uh, impatient when it comes to playing time. So I'm kind of wondering, how did you find the patience uh, to stick it out uh, with, uh, with Grant and Jackson in front of you when you first got to school? And uh, question number two, uh, uh, what have you seen with uh, West Virginia's Javon Carter, and, and how do you guys think uh, you know, that matchup at battling point guards will play out tomorrow? Yeah, I think, um, you know, as I mentioned before, the culture, uh, you know, guys in the past have, haven't been able to play right away in this program. They wait their turn. Um, and fortunately for me, I was able to develop a good relationship with Demetrius. So, you know, he was always in my ear uh, telling me to keep working hard. And like I said before, it, it, it's hard to do that. You know, anybody that's been in that situation, you know, not playing, and it's a hard thing to, uh, to grasp every day. But like I said before, these guys around me, uh, being around them every day, that, that really does help. And 
it was just a matter of being patient, like you said, and just keep working hard. And um, if you do the right thing, you know, you get an opportunity and got my opportunity. And I just try to do what I do and I try to play. And as for West Virginia, um, we know what they do. Um, it's going to be a fun game. It's going to be fast paced. Um, their guards are really good. Their bigs are really good. So it's going to be a, another fun game in March. Let's go, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Bonzi, how much has a chronic conversation about what you aren't because of your size fueled you through the entirety of your career? Um, I'll just say being motivated, um, being motivated to do what I can do, um, you know, to help us succeed as possible, trying to lead by example on and off the court. And, you know, just use, you know, what they say as a motivation. You know, our team, we're focused in on what we can do and how we can be better. I think that's something that is within our program. We don't really worry about what other people say. We lock in, and um, we know what we can do um, to win games. Is there anyone that helped you believe that it doesn't matter what mold you fit, you're, you can just play? Yeah, I think growing up, my father was a huge example of you know, always being there for me and just motivating me to be the best player as possible. And then coming here, having a great coaching staff, having great you know, brothers and teammates who um, just push me to be the best player I can be. And learning from guys, from former leaders, um, former captains of how to lead on and off the court is something that has really, um, you know, helped our, helped me to be uh, a good uh, captain and leader. Go to Mark first, and then over here. Yeah, some questions. Just maybe we'll start with Steve on the matchup. Obviously, they're the number one turnover forcing team in the nation. What do you see when you watch them? Yeah, they do a great job of, you know, forcing people to get out of their comfort zone. I think um, their defense creates and turns into their offense. And that's something that they're really known for. I think the way we play, we do a great job handling the ball. It's a credit to, you know, Maddie and our guards who uh, make great decisions. So for us, I think the challenge is just going to be making sure uh, making the right decisions and not rushing. And I think that's something that uh, we've been very good at all season long. So just uh, taking our time, making the right decisions, and um, I think we'll be able to get some good shots. And then Matt, you're in the, going to be in the middle of that. Have you ever faced a defense like this? Yeah, you know, we've kind of compared them to Florida State a little bit, um, being in the passing lanes, um, contesting you, you know, full court pressure. Um, I think theirs is a little, little more different. It's a little more uh, havoc, I would say, or reckless. You know, you got guys everywhere. So we just need to stay poised with the ball. Uh, we need guys to be receivers. Everybody that's on the floor needs to be a receiver, um, and we need to be strong with the ball. And then, Bonzi, if you would comment, like maybe if you have what. Um, you know, what allows you guys? I mean, one team made 40 turnovers. You haven't made 40 turnovers like in the last six games combined. Uh, you know, what do you think allows you guys to have so few turnovers? Yeah, I just think, you know, um, within our program, that's something that we like to do. We like to, you know, not turn over the ball, be strong with the ball. And I think, you know, playing teams like Florida State, Louisville has really helped us prepare for games like this where they press, they deny to the perimeter. I think. You know, playing those ACC games really, um, you know, help us to play in games like this. Let's go, uh, Josh first, and then we'll go in the center here. Uh, Steve, Josh Verlin, City of Basketball Love. Um, what lessons as a team do you feel like you guys have taken away from the Elite Eight runs the last two years? And then personally, how do you feel like your, if at all, your mental approach has changed this being your senior year? Yeah, I think the obviously the last two years, you know, having that experience has helped us a lot. I think you saw yesterday. Um, you know, first round, close game. And, uh, you know, we were pretty poised and we've been in those situations before. And I think those two losses in the Elite Eight, you know, drives this team, especially since the end of last year, you know, us three who were up here. Um, you know, the guys in the locker room knows what it felt like to lose. And, um, you know, that's kind of pushed us this year to t try to take it a step further. Um, and I think we just have to continue to take it one game at a time. Yeah, I think I'm just trying to enjoy it and, uh, you know, soak up all the experience of the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, I've been lucky enough to, you know, be here for the, pe the past three years. Um, you know, Coach Bray always talks about not taking it for granted. You know, not everybody gets the opportunity to play in the tournament. And, um, you know, we've, we've had a couple good runs. And I think, uh, you know, this team, it's, it's been a great season. We've had a lot of huge wins. And uh, I just want to continue to play as long as I can. And, uh, you know, that starts with tomorrow and trying to uh, get to the next round. Back left. Jump. Jonah Javada with WGRZ here in Buffalo. Um, Matt, how would you describe Thursday's crowd in terms of Irish support? We love our fans. You know, we, we feel like we got the best fans. Um, 
crowd started piling up, you know, I think in the second half, a lot of Princeton, a lot of West Virginia got uh, people, so I'm sure a lot of people in the stands were pulling for the upset, but, you know, we love our crowds. Um, they always travel well. Um, they're always really supportive, and um, there's been a couple games, you know, where, where we played in Greensboro for the, the ACC tournament, and the whole place was blue, and then we have our little spot behind the bench, and, and they're just as loud, so we appreciate, you know, everything that they do, and uh, they know that we know that that we appreciate it. And uh, Bonzi, how typical or common is it? I mean, with a team like Notre Dame, sometimes it's like the Yankees, there are fans seemingly everywhere all over the country. Uh, how common is that when you guys go play road games and neutral side games that there's a large Irish contingent? Yeah, like Matt said, we love the fans. We feed off the fans' energy um, during the game. And it's great, you know, when we're coming, getting ready for the game, heading to the bus and the band's playing. Um, a fight song and fans are coming cheering you on, clapping, and I think that really just gets us motivated and um, gives us a lot of energy to play well. You know, we play for our family, play for the fans, uh, the university, so it just uh, helps us play with that edge. Right in the center, name and affiliation, please. Uh, Mark, Tra Mark Tracy from the New York Times. I was just in your locker room. There's a TV in there. You can guess what it's uh, tuned into. I'm wondering if, amidst obviously all your preparation for games and the games themselves, if you're also able to be fans of of March Madness, and if it's you know like like us, like most of the people watching, if it's if it's a cool annual event to you guys beyond the fact that obviously you get to play in it. Yeah, I mean this is something that we've all been watching. I think our whole lives. You know, we have a lot of friends from AU teams and friends that we've gone to playing in these games. You know, we're texting each other, we're talking about the game, seeing when they play, trying to tune in. So this is just a great you know environment and great culture for all the basketball, um, just watching games, you know, um, relating to it, just watching different experiences, learning from the game, and I think it's something that really helps us bring the culture together. Yeah, I think it's all part of, you know, just being in the tournament and that experience, you know, you get to watch these other games, you get to see all the uh, these crazy games with the buzzer beaters and stuff like that, and like Bonte said, you know, a lot of us have friends uh, that are out here playing too, so. We're always talking and seeing uh, how they're doing. So it's just a, it's a fun atmosphere. And, uh, you know, we, we do have the loosest coach in America. So, you know, we got TVs on. We, got, we, just, we just hang out and have a good time together. <laughs> Go ahead. Mark Herman, <laughs> Newsday in New York. I, I want to follow up on that for, for Bonzi and, and all, all of you. That what impressions do you have of the tournament so far? Are there common themes? What, what has struck you when you watch these games? Yeah, I think all the games are, are great. Um, just tuning in, walking in, watching them, just enjoying the game, um, not taking it for granted. The games have been fun, you know. Hasn't really been any upsets, um, I don't think. I mean, we just lock, paying attention, just, you know, watching the games. It's a, it's a tournament of champions, so it's, it's, it's obviously really fun to watch. Um, every team in this tournament is capable of winning games, so it's, it's just, it's a fun time. It's a, it's, it's a time for basketball fans to, to just really enjoy and just sit down and watch it. Um, I think it's the greatest sporting event, you know, that we have. It's just, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I would just say the one thing from watching yesterday is every single game is a close game. Um, you're not going to see many blowouts in this tournament. Uh, like Matt said, every team has had a heck of a regular season. They probably won their league, and uh, they're all coming down to the wire. I know yesterday we played early, so we got to watch um, pretty much the rest of the games for the day, which was cool, and uh, just to see guys hitting big shots, making plays, and um, especially guys in you know our conference who we've, we've played against all season long, and watching them go against other conferences, I think it's pretty fun. Right, time for a couple more. Let's start right back here. Mitch Bingle, the Charleston Gazette Mail. First, happy St. Patrick's Day to you guys. And Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. I was just wondering, Bonzi, if you could talk about this matchup with West Virginia, first of all, as a team, and then second, individually, how you think of them. Yeah, I mean, they're a team that, you know, they're really defensively oriented. Uh, they press the whole game. Um, they defend. They, you know, they have some three-point shooters. They have drivers. So it's going to be a fun game. And, um, you know, I think going over this scout, we've played, you know, we played teams like that who, um, can really defend and can really deny um, up to the perimeter. So I think it's something, you know, playing in the AC has really helped us. For myself, just sticking with what I do, um, trying to be the best rebounder I, I can be out there, grabbing all the rebounds, um, just playing within myself, staying in character, um, and motivating my teammates as best as I can so I can so they can get the um, do things they want to do as well. I'm going to go down here to John and then go to Dana here in the center. I guess um, Steve. 
Steve, did, the fact that it is St. Patrick's Day and you guys are the Fighting Irish, yeah. is there anything that you guys do that's special to uh, celebrate the day uh, or anything like that? Um, no, nah, not so not so far. I don't think. Maybe if um, you know we get a win and go back to South Bend and enjoy St. Patrick's Day <laughs> there, but um, you know nothing. Just try to enjoy the holiday. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Let's go, Dana in the center, and then back to Jonah. Uh, Matt, I just wonder if you can expand on the loosest coach in America. What makes Mike so loose? How about this? He, he comes into the locker room right after we get off the court and puts on a, a green hoodie and said he's got to get in St. Patrick's mode for the media. I mean, we got a, we got a game tomorrow to go to the Sweet 16, and this guy's worrying about what he's wearing to, for the media. So it's just a, it's a, it's an atmosphere, and he creates an environment where, you know, you just, you're having fun, and you got guys that want to win and want to play for each other and want to play for the coaches, and I think that's really powerful. Okay, that's... Uh Wrap up with Jonah here. Um, what's your experience been like in Buffalo? Uh, granted, there's a large number of Irish fans here. It's a big St. Patrick's Day city. You guys had any weird experiences with uh, Buffalonians coming up to you, and whether it's words of encouragement or whatnot? Uh, there's a lot of snow here. It was a lot of snow, so I think uh, it's kind of similar to uh, South Bend. A lot of snow on the ground, um, but I mean, fans have been great here. We're enjoying it. Uh, we're not taking it for granted. We go into the hotel. It's cookies. There's snacks for us. We feel like we're home. Uh, you know, we're just having fun. We're enjoying it, and um, we're having a good time. You guys done anything fun, Steve? Uh, yeah, we went out to eat the first night we were here. It's probably one of the best, like steaks and lobster bisque that I ever had. Yeah. It was uh, Sears. 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 It was, uh, yeah, it was really good, and I think we're going to go grab some food tonight. And, um, yeah, so just trying to take it all in and enjoy the town. Guys, thanks very much. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. <clears throat> okay, we're joined by uh, Notre Dame head coach Mike Bray. Uh, coach, uh, want to make an opening statement or you just want to go right to questions? Question. Right to questions. Sounds good. Uh, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Let's, uh, we'll start over here with John and then we'll, we'll come over here on the far side. Mike, John Warrow with the AP. Um, well, you obviously did, did come out with a green pullover and happy St. Patrick's Day and what, you know, what is the feeling today being at St. Patrick's Day. And well, can we make this quick? I'm the honorary grand marshal of the parade in an hour. So, uh, you know, if I could get out of here, you know, I'm gonna, I gotta, you know, kiss babies and wave to people. The float I'm on, they say, is awesome. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, he was buying that. <laughs> No, it's awesome. No, you know, there's always a little buzz around our university and our place on St. Patrick's Day. There's no question about it. And uh, figured I'd break out the festive green for it. Um, you know, same, yeah, I'll say this. St. Patrick's Day is great when you're still alive in the NSA tournament. It sucks when you're not. <laughs> Let's go with the far side right here. And then we'll go to Dane in the center. Paul Gotham picking splinters. There was a stretch yesterday in the first half where you guys converted coming out of uh, timeouts on three or four and got what you wanted. There are a lot of experienced teams in America. Not everyone can execute to that level. Two part, what's it take? What's it like to have that ace 
and what's it take to get to that point to get guys to do that? I, I think you have to have high basketball IQ guys and experience and veterans, and, and we're an older group, and we're an older group that has won together, and we've won together in this tournament. So I think the concentration and focus level in Brooklyn was fabulous. And yesterday, even though it was not pretty offensively for us, I thought we were very locked in. Uh, but we did get some good stuff, especially post-ups for Bonzi uh, out of timeouts. We thought that was really good. And, you know, again, this group has played together a lot now, and they know who they are. I give them a lot of credit that they kind of figure it out in our motion, and it's not maybe a specific play all the time. Let's go Dana in the center. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Matt just termed you the loosest coach in America. And I'm just wondering if earlier in your career you think anybody would have referred to you as that or is that something that you've aged into? You know, I think, uh, Dana, I think I was uh, a little more uptight when I got out to South Bend in 2000 because I just was trying not to get fired. You know, you're trying to survive and build it. Even though I would say this inwardly, inwardly I was more uptight. I think I've always tried to be on, you know, loose with our guys and not get them uptight. Um, of course, when you're a little more established, you can, you can really be loose when you're, I have tenure now at Notre Dame, so I'm, <laughs> I'm really loose. <laughs> right in the center here, Mark. Uh, a similar, uh, uh, in a similar light, we have a rare confluence tomorrow of two coaches who don't wear ties facing each other. Uh, I think we know a lot of the the backstory behind Coach Huggins' uh, decision there, uh, but you kind of do it differently because you actually are dressed quite slickly, but without a tie. And I know in the, your past you had a, another way of uh, of dressing as well. And I was wondering if you could kind of take us through that and your current thinking. Well, I'm you know I was uh, m maybe I was the one that got the Mac turtleneck popular, you know, <laughs> but that was my 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 look and when I got to Notre Dame, you know, first year, so God, you know, did he really think that through? Is that I said. I was in the America East. It's a bus league. It's you wear a sweatshirt on the bus when you beat Boston University and you bus six hours. So it was comfortable. I stayed with it uh, until my daughter said, "Dad, that's got to go. <laughs> that's out. That's got to go." Uh, but there's no way I can put the tie on. So you're right. Bob and I were kidding at the meeting the other day. Said uh, we run into each other. Two guys not wearing ties. I don't know how the NSA feels about that, you know, and the whole decorum rule if we'll get a fine or whatever. <laughs> Let's go, you, Coach. go right behind you there to Jonah. Hey, Mike. Jonah Javad with uh, WGRZ TV, fellow no tie wearer. Uh, question about the uh, Irish fan base here in Buffalo. Uh, did, it, did it feel like a neutral site at all yesterday for you? Well, no, it didn't. I think, you know, this town is a good ND town. You know, I've, you know, over 17 years, you know, I've run into people from here that are big ND fans, whether they're alums or Subway alums. Um, I hope they can get out of jail, you know, by 8 a.m. tomorrow to come to our game because they're rolling today. I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, we have some extra bail money. Just to make sure we, we can get them out. We know what happens with the Irish on a day like today. But um, uh, now, the, now the, the, it was. There's no question. In the second half yesterday, it felt like a road game. You know, West Virginia fans, Princeton fans are certainly, or uh, uh, Bucknell fans certainly cheering for Princeton. And that was kind of a road atmosphere in the ACC. We had to escape. I think we'll be well represented tomorrow, though. Uh, with your son from. Yeah. going to school around these parts. Has he told you about how Buffalo does St. Patrick's Day parades, whatnot? He, um, he did a little bit, but the um, waitress work, uh, helping us this morning, I said, so is it big here? And she went on for like 10 minutes how it's unbelievable. So, you know, uh, I'm sure today starting at noon, right, the bar's open at noon and we're off and running. <laughs> Let's go to Dana here and then we've got a couple in the back. If we can get a microphone in the back. Mike, in an era when so many players are leaving early, I'm wondering if Villanova and even perhaps if you were to ever win a national championship, if programs like yours with experience are more equipped to repeat. You know, I, I think they are. And, you know, Jay and I's program, as you know, kind of built the same way with um, guys that grow up in the program and get older and aren't necessarily McDonald's All-Americans. I think it's a huge advantage. I think what it's done – you know, through the Big East and the ACC, we, we've been very consistent because we've never been too young. 
We've had guys growing up. We've had, I call it the junior year light bulb go on. Zach August, B.J. Beecham, guys that are with us for two years, Matt Farrell. You know, you throw them in there, and then as juniors, they're really ready to deliver for you. You know, I, I tell young coaches when they get the job, get old and stay old. You know, can you get a rhythm to your roster, whether you're redshirting, taking transfers, which we've done, to stay older really helps. Mike, back. Mike, you've got a long history with West Virginia from years gone by. Yeah. Just some of your memories, good, bad. You had a lot of success during some of those, those runs. We've had great games with West Virginia, and this is bringing back a lot of Big East memories all afternoon and night last night. I'm thinking about our games, certainly against John Beeline and when, since Bob has been there. And my best, my, I guess my memory is our, how hard the Mountaineer crowd is on us down there. It is one of the most brutal. I have heard some of the most unbelievable stuff. But what I do is I'll turn to my assistant and go, God, that was a good one. You know, I mean, he really ripped me on that one. No, they're, they're, they, it's been unbelievable down there. Great games, great battles. The last game I remember is, you know, we had that two seed with Ben Hansborough. We go down there and, and West Virginia beat us. And uh, Jerry West's son is a walk-on. He throws him in a game. He bangs down a three across from our bench. I say, we ain't winning today. <laughs> Forget it. Jerry West's son hit a three. It's over. Let's go home. Get ready for the next one. But just great matchups. Pitt snoggle, ball screen, stepping back and shooting a three. Butler, uh, you know, through the years. Um, uh, there's, it, it, we played a lot. We played a lot of great games. A lot of great memories. All the way back, Justin. Coach uh, Justin Jackson with the Dominion Post. It was obviously, obviously interesting uh, the other day when you when you compared Matt with Bobby Hurley. And I'm just kind of wondering what what uh, have you seen with West Virginia's Javon Carter, and how do you kind of see that matchup between him and Matt tomorrow? Well, here's let me let me. Matt Farrell is not better than Jerry West. <laughs> okay, I just want to be clear on that. I think it's a great matchup, and guess what? They played on an all-star team together this summer, the East Coast All-Star. They know each other. They were over in, I believe, Italy. So they're kind of buddies, and they went after each other in practice. It's a great matchup. Carter is a heck of a guard, and he's a winner. He's a big shot taker, and he's a big shot maker. Heck of a defender. That's a great matchup at the point. We get a couple questions over here. Let's start with Mark closest. Hi, Mike. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. Uh, it seems like the, the players are so phenomenal in shooting threes these days. How has that evolved since you started coaching? Yeah, it's an amazing weapon now, and almost all of us really use it. You know, I guess a great example is you have a three-on-two fast break. God, we were drilled as young players. you got to get a layup. Now guys spot up and fire, and there's not even a second thought. I mean, I don't ever see a coach yell, that's a bad shot, if it's the right guy shooting it. It's an amazing weapon. It's, it's, uh, it's one that we use offensively, and it's one that we worry about defensively. Certainly yesterday was an example of that. How can we limit guys, you know, of, of making threes against? Our three-point line defense is something we talk about, and it's been probably our best this year. That's why it's helped us. Another unrelated question that, uh, you know, you have a, a – a very solid fan in the governor of New Jersey. Where does that go back from? Delaware. He's a Delaware grad. Chris Christie's a Delaware grad. And when I got the job, he was just an attorney and came down, big hoops guy, and was real supportive of my program. Um, now his daughter is at ND and is a manager for us. So we have just, we were great friends when I was in Newark, Delaware, and, and, and he was a hoops fan lawyer from New Jersey. And um, he knows more about my team than some of my staff. The guy's unbelievable plugged into our stuff. So love having him around. We'll go uh, here and then we'll go all the way in the back. Mike, Josh Verlin from City of Basketball Love. Uh, Steve and VJ both gave you a lot of credit for saying they were both kind of soft-spoken kids in their freshman and sophomore year. They said you were really instrumental helping them open up. I uh, was just wondering if you could you know, talk about what you saw from them from that standpoint when they were young and, and, and how they've kind of matured in that. Yeah, they were really quiet guys and we had good vocal old guys when they were young. And I think what's helped them too is seeing some of the older guys that have come before them. They saw Jaron Grant and Pat Connaughton lead one heck of a team two years ago. That's the best example ever. Nothing I can tell them is gonna get them, you know, more ready to lead than seeing that. And then they saw Demetrius Jackson and Zach August 
do a job that maybe I didn't expect they could do and being vocal and verbal. So they have come out of their shell and um, you add Bonzi and Matt Farrell to that and it's been kind of a nice chemistry of voices leading our team. Coach, we're gonna go all the way in the back. Mike, Jeff Coyle with West Virginia Illustrated. Uh, we've made a lot all season long about the idea of a quick turnaround, getting prepared for the Mountaineers and that pressure defense. What has it been like for you guys from the scout with your assistants to now, you know, this 48 hours leading up to tip off to face a bit of an unorthodox style? Yeah, I, I think we've, you know, tried to compare them to Florida State, which we played three times, playing 11, 12 guys, getting up, getting into you. The game in Tallahassee, we lost, we turned it over 18 times. We did not take care of the basketball the other two times we did. So we try to make a comparison there and get back to that kind of prep. You know, I don't want to overcoach it. You know, we have press offense that you work on back in October, and you don't want to overanalyze it too much. We need guys to be receivers. Um, I, I think we can prepare in a day. I've got really pretty sharp guys and, and high basketball IQ guys. So um, I think our thing is, you know, when we – when we get through it, are we, are we looking to attack? Are we looking to run offense? And then we have to change defenses on them. We can't play man-to-man -man the whole game. We got to make them play against something different to kind of maybe change your rhythm since they change your rhythm with full court pressure. And speaking of the rhythm, uh, they say they want to speed up opposing teams. Is that a mental thing, a physical thing? How do you keep your guys from getting caught up in that? Yeah, we're, we're not the fastest, you know, if you look at our pace. You know, we, we have been – kind of a situational running team. I think what we do is, is we, we've done, gotten to uh, do a good job when we don't have numbers in transition, we kind of back that thing out and make you guard us for a while. And we're gonna have to be disciplined with that. Now that's easier said than done because they're really good in the half court too. They're face guarding you, they may just run and trap you there. And so finding the rhythm of this game, I think is gonna be a feeling out process for us tomorrow in the first half. Yep. Down front, Mark. Are, are you going to sleep easier tonight because you got Matt? I mean, because, like, you know, if you got an inexperienced point guard, they'll yeah. just chew that guy into mush, you know? Yeah, no, there's no question, Matt, but, you know, Steve Astoria, TJ Gibbs, Rex Fluger are big guys. You know, Bonzi could bring the ball up a little bit. You know, we, we don't turn the ball over much. You know, it's a team that doesn't turn the ball over. I think we're first or se second or third in the nation against a team that, turns people over, you know, so something's got to give. We're going to kick it around a little bit more than usual, but we have to be great with it tomorrow overall to win. Go ahead, John. Mike, Front and off. this is a, almost a follow-up on Matt. And I, I think you may have raised at least some eyebrows here in comparing Matt to, to, yeah. to, to Bobby yesterday, but or two days ago, I'm sorry. What gives you that confidence that he is that type of a player and what do you make of the adjustment that he's made in going from where he was a year ago to where he is now? You know, my comparison is skill set, not honors. Skill set, period. And, and I think uh, um, the, his ability to play fearlessly and make plays off the ball screen, which he's had to do all year, um, and then the ability, his ability to score and make shots makes him – unbelievably valuable to us you know he he shoots it and he shoots it deep he can make the runner in the lane he can get to the hole with his speed and get fouled he's pretty much automatic from the foul line um you know so that that was that's that's why i made the comparison but also that's why he that's why we're got a chance to get to the second weekend you know we lose grant and jackson two guards to the nba the big question mark was who's going to handle the ball for us. And for him to do what he's done, I mean, it's, it's just a great story, really a neat story, and glad he's coming back for another year, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Got time for two more. We'll start over here on the uh, far side here. Chris McKee, Sportsnet Canada. Obviously, last night being a high point of the season for you guys, um, can you look back and think, you know, the lowest point of the season for you and your team and what you guys did to kind of fight through that? Yeah, we lost five out of six in the ACC, and the fifth was at North Carolina. Remember that game that was postponed because the water in Chapel Hill was so – all our – everything was screwed up. And we played great. We made a comeback, lost to Carolina there. That was five out of six, and we were six and five in the league coming home to play Wake Forest. And we had to kind of make our stand against Wake, and we did. 
We played very nervous in the first half because we knew how much was on the line to get going again. Then we beat Florida State on that Saturday, and we've been on a pretty good run ever since. But again, when you have maturity and older guys and their demeanor is kind of like that, you can handle five out of six without panic. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. A 224 West Virginia student athletes.
Yeah. Yeah. A unique individual. Just my uh, daily reminder to make sure your phones are silenced, please, as we're joined by West Virginia student athletes, uh, Nathan Adrian, uh, Javon Carter, Elijah Macon, and Tariq Phillip. Gentlemen, congratulations on uh, moving on. Uh, get ready to play Notre Dame at 12:10 tip tomorrow. Uh, we'll go ahead and take questions for these gentlemen at this time. Please raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone to you. Go ahead, Jess. Uh, question for Elijah. Uh, Notre Dame's offensive style is kind of unique to the fact that they don't really have a true post player and that they're you know, kind of five out and, and away from the paint. Uh, what does that do for you as far as uh, defending, you, you know, drawing you away from the basket? Uh, was that something that uh, you think you, know, you could, could handle tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. Um, I just feel like, you know, as a team, we're going to go over what we have to do today. Um, just basically be, um, just figure out who we're going to guard and who we're going to take out the game today. And, um, that's pretty much it. Is it a unique offensive system to have something to guard them? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I can probably compare them to Iowa State. You know, try to spread the floor a lot. But um, I just feel like, you know, we're going to go over our principles today and uh, take care of it. Yep. Got a question right here. Wait for the microphone, please. And name and affiliation. Kevin Kinder with the Blue and Gold News for Nathan and Elijah. You're going up against bigger, taller guys yesterday. Tomorrow you're going up against a post player that's shorter, like you said, more athletic. Is there a difference in the way that you play them and approach them, especially in the post? I mean, uh, definitely. Um, I mean, just knowing that he, has, he likes to play his off angles, and uh, just knowing that you have to stay down in the pump fakes and um, just basically, you know, just guard him off the ball and just basically, you know, try to keep him out, um, out of the paint as much as possible. Uh, that's pretty much what I've seen from watching film so much. Nathan? Uh, I think it changes how we have to guard him as a team more than individually you know they're five out instead of having someone sit in the post so it'll be a whole team effort john 
Just for uh, Javon, it's John Worrell with the Associated Press. Uh, Mike Bray was saying that you had done some playing with Matt Farrell over this, this past summer. Is that accurate? Yes. What did you see out of him, and how has he developed as a point guard, you know, now that he's had a full season under his belt? Um, pretty much what everybody's been seeing all season. Um, he's pretty aggressive. Um, he, he can pass, he can score, you know, he's a good point guard. Um, it's just our job to do a good job on him and stop him from um, being comfortable. Let's go in the back, Justin. Greg Hunter, Blue and Gold News. Tariq, for you, and I guess for Nate as well, for especially the seniors, you guys have been involved in a lot of these NCAA tournament games. Tariq, you hit a, a game winner a couple years ago uh, in one of these, but does it feel different now? that you're a senior, that this run has taken on more importance? Uh, it's, it's a little different because, um, you know, as you said, we've been here before, not one time, but two times. So um, we just feel more composed and just, you know. Uh, yeah, I'd say it feels a little bit more different. You know, towards the end of the game, you, when it's a little bit closer and you're comfortable with, you start to realize that if you blow this one, then you're not going to have another chance. So. Kind of gives you a little bit more of a, I don't know, a little bit more of a drive to win. Other questions? Go ahead, Mark, right there. Yeah, they make the fewest turnovers in the country. Uh, I guess maybe for Javon or anybody wants to answer this. I mean, do you think it's going to be tougher to impose your will on them? Well, I don't know. Every game is a challenge. Um, we come out and do what we got to do, then it's possible. We just got to play hard. Elijah, anything to add? Yeah, I just feel like, you know, if we come out and do what we're supposed to do, you know, just do what our, our, all our coaches ask us to do and everything. I feel like everything will take care of itself and we just go out and play our game. Any other questions for our West Virginia student athletes? If not, gentlemen, appreciate your time. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks. Coach Huggins up at 2.40.
We are joined by West Virginia head coach Bob Huggins, who has his team uh, preparing to play Notre Dame in our first game tomorrow at 12:10 uh, tip-off. Uh, we'll go ahead and go straight to questions for Coach Huggins. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Please give your name and affiliation, if you would, before your question. Kevin Kinder, Blue and Gold News. Coach, you've said after every postseason game you haven't been happy with the way your team has played. How far away are you from a level where you feel like that you'll need to get to to win this next game? Well, we got to make shots. We got to make shots. We got to make free throws, and we can't turn it over. I mean, if we, we do those things, we're pretty good. You don't do those things, you're not very good, but that's just not us, that's everybody. Let's go back. I just really say that we didn't play very well, so you guys have something to write. <laughs> I know how hard it is, so. We can write about anything. So. Well, well, yeah, and do, <laughs> and do, by the way. Coach, you, you obviously saw Notre Dame a lot in the Big East days. Just some of your memories going against Mike Bray, just. Big East tournament games, whatever it happened to be? Well, we had some great games. Um, we had a hard time winning in South Bend. They had a hard time winning in Morgantown. And um, fortunate enough to beat them in the semifinals of the Big East tournament in 2010. And they had a three to win the game. And fortunately for us, not for them, it, it was short and got banged around a little bit. Actually. Deshaun Butler, nobody knows this really. He ran over and hugged Wellington Smith, who got the rebound. And the reason he went over and hugged him was because Deshaun didn't block out his man, and he had a clear run at the goal and just happened to bounce uh, Wellington's way. And so Day ran over and hugged him because he said he'd never heard the end of it if his guy would have would have rebounded it and scored. We'll go to Dana and then back to Justin. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Bob, a lot of times it seems like Mike and, and his team, for that matter, fly a little under the radar nationally. What, as a coach, do you think of the job he's been able to do at Notre Dame over the years? Well, I think Mike's one of the, the, the better coaches in, in, in our game. Um, you know, Mike's a guy who can pretty much take anybody and make them pretty good. And, and um, you know, they didn't always play the way they're playing now. I think he does a great job of adapting style of play to personnel. And, um, you know, they, they do a great job of, they got great ball movement, they've got great spacing. Um, they can score it at the goal, which is kind of imperative in, in our game to be able to figure out a way to score it somehow. I was just telling them on a, you know, our, our game's about numbers. You know, one on O is the best number. Uh, we generally pretty good at those. Uh, then you know, then the two on one, three on two, we're not quite as good at. And you know, when you're five on five, it's hard to score. So that's why everybody does all the things they do: ball screens, single doubles, staggers, flares, whatever, to kind of try to create a five on four, so that you've got numbers. And then when you add uh, the spacing that they do, mm -hmm. and they have great spacing, then that makes them a, a hard team to guard. Justin, go ahead. Justin Jackson with the Dominion Post. Coach, uh, you, you guys have obviously gone up against a lot of talent point guards in the Big 12, Frank Mason, Monte Morris, Jawan Evans, uh, uh, Farrell for Notre Dame. Where does he kind of compare uh, with that group? And you know, how do you kind of see uh, him and Javon going up against each, each other tomorrow. Uh, what do you think that could be like? Well, I think he's different than, than, than those guys because he plays so well off the ball. I mean, you, you were kind of talking about guys who, who were really, really good with the ball. And, and not that he's not good with the ball, but he can, uh, he can play off the ball uh, as well as he can play on the ball, which I think you know, those other guys kind of grew up with the ball in their hands and, and, and really play with the ball in their hands. They're the guys that, that uh, get in the seam and, and create numbers, where he's a, he's a guy who uh, 
a lot of times comes down and gives it up and he's the guy who's coming off of screens and 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 setting screens and and and, and trying to create numbers for his team. Across the here back right. Paul Goff and Pick and Splinters. Yesterday, first half, I think it was about four or five straight times you guys converted on baseline inbound plays. I know you see it every day, but what's it take to get to a point where your team is executing at that level, and how important is that uh, in these games here in March? Well, I'm like everybody else in our business. When you know somebody runs something against us that they, it's hard for us to guard, and they score, I steal it. And um, everything we run is something that I got from somebody else that, you know, you might tweak it a little bit, but we've been running the same thing for 10 years at West Virginia, and we just keep scoring. So obviously, Nolan Richardson was pretty damn smart. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mark, on the right yep. side here. Um, Mark Gaughan, Buffalo News. Just given how well they handle the ball and limit turnovers, is this a bad matchup for you? They don't let us pick. I mean, if you're asking me, would we have picked him? Absolutely not. Um, I, I don't know if it is or it isn't. I mean, I guess that's why you play. Um, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try to do the same thing to them that they do to us. We're gonna try to create numbers in a half court, and we're gonna try to take transition when it's there. I, I don't, I don't know whether it is or it isn't. Probably about. Two o'clock tomorrow, I'll have an answer for you. Go ahead, John. Bob, John Warrell with the AP. Do you miss the Big East? Who, do, who doesn't miss New York? Who doesn't miss the Garden? Sure, you miss you miss the Garden. Um, but you know, the Big the Big Twelve has been great for us. I mean, uh, we're playing in. It's been the best RPI league in the in the country for the last four or five years. There's been great players. I mean, it, you you look at the the coaching in that league is is terrific, and there's no bottom. And and the reality is, for as great as the Big East was, there was a bottom. There were nine or ten teams that were really good, and then there were about five or six that weren't so good. And you know, you looked at the schedule. You talk about you know matchups. That those are the ones you kind of said we these are the ones we really need to get because these these ones are gettable, and the Big Twelve doesn't have that. You know, your uh, Oklahoma State today takes Michigan to the wire and they're and they're really good and they lost their first six league games. I mean, think about that. If that's the bottom, our bottom's pretty good. Then they ended up not being in the bottom, obviously, but. Look, I mean, the coaches in our league are just. That's that's the that's the worrisome thing. Is you look every time you look down there, you know. Sometimes, they're, they're, honestly, sometimes I'd look down there and think, well, if it gets really good, I might be a little smarter than that guy down there. I'm looking down there in the Big Twelve. I don't see anybody I'm smarter than. You go to the far right side here. Uh, Chris McKee, Sportsnet Canada. Um, you know, when your players were up here earlier. It was, it was a bit of a somber mood, um, you know, for some young men that won yesterday. Is taking the emotion out of the game, is that important? Um, is like a key to victory, or do you encourage sort of the highs and lows? I was just, I was in a locker room, and they weren't very somber in there. Uh, it's a long year, you know, it's a long year, and you, you, you can't get too excited about the highs and you can't get too down about the lows and and you know I think the probably the, the appropriate thing to do is is to keep an even keel but I mean if if you don't play with a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm the way we play you get exposed we, we've got to cover a whole lot more ground than everybody else does because we're playing the length of the floor when everybody else is playing a half court. So energy and enthusiasm are incredibly important to us. They're just probably saving it, tricking you. That's what they're doing. <laughs> Say they tricked you. 
you could go far left here, Coach. Stephen Brooks, CNHI Sports Indiana. Uh, Bob, I was just curious about your thoughts on the NIT going to four quarters, and uh, is that something you'd like to see experimenting, experimenting with this year? Um, is that something you'd like to see the game go toward? Uh, just what are your sort of general thoughts on, on that format? I think we ought to stop having a rules committee in Palm Springs. Uh, <laughs> I, I think be, because they, they, they just feel this need to make changes to justify them being there. And what's wrong with our game? I mean, I don't know what's wrong with our game. Why do we need four quarters? I, don't know. I, think, I think everybody plays four quarters in high school and they can't wait to get into college and play halves. But that's just me. But I do think we ought to move the, we ought to, we ought to have them here in Buffalo. That'd be. A, <laughs> In February, yeah. <laughs> Other questions for Coach Huggins? Uh, let's go in the back, Rick. Greg Hunter again. Coach, have you figured out Lamont? He hadn't hit a lot of shots since the Texas game, then, then obviously hit shots for you yesterday. Just youth, is it, or is there something he's, he's adjusted to? I, I think he, he started rushing things a little bit, quite frankly. You know, people are, are, are bigger, stronger, and faster, you know, and, and they get to the ball a lot faster. And I think he just started rushing things. When he slowed down, then he started making shots again. But that's the same with everybody. I mean, nobody makes, consistently makes hurried shots. Any other questions for Coach Huggins? As a side note, I think the other thing about the rules committee is we, we, you have to have somebody on it over six foot. Um, <laughs> Anything else about rules committee? Or? I have a lot of things about th the I rules committee. I thought you might. We had a little time. That's why I was wondering. Well, it's, no, I, I think I'm, I've already got myself in enough trouble. Okay. We'll call it there then. Thanks, Coach. Yep. <clears throat> Villanova student athletes at 310.
Okay, we're joined now by uh, Villanova student athletes Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart. Gentlemen, congrats on uh, advancing to tomorrow. Um, and you guys will be playing Wisconsin in the second game tomorrow night. Uh, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions at this time for either Jalen or Josh. Uh, raise your hand, we'll get a mic. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Fire <coughs> for Josh. Uh, Josh, after watching the film of last night's game, obviously you had to be happy with the second half. First half, do you, can you put your finger on just what uh, was going on with you guys? Um, nah, no, we didn't. We haven't really watched the film of that. Um, and, and right now we can't. You know, we got to focus on Wisconsin. So whatever happened, you know, what happened, we know we got to play better. So, um, no, we're not dwelling on that. We just got to know um, what we got to do tomorrow. Go ahead, Mark. Mark Herman from Newsday of New York. Josh, you know, the thing that the, you and Wisconsin have in common, you have a lot of veteran players. A lot of, can you just talk about just the, the, the experiences you gained of just staying in school all these years? What, is it, what has it done for you? <laughs> um, uh, you know, give, it gave me a lot of insight of just, you know, the college basketball game. Um, and just you see so many different defenses able to read certain things better. Um, you, you know, you're not as um, anxious or, you know, nervous during, you know, big games or um, tough situations. Um, you, you know, it really helps you just be um, collected, you know, really the whole game. Um, you know, and that's really it. You know, it, it's always great to have that experience. Uh, um, you know, Jalen, who's, who's only a sophomore, who's the coach always calls him an old soul. So, you know, having him, um, you know, out there. Then you have, you know, Daryl, Chris, myself, um, you know, Mikel, who's you know, a little bit into his, you know, the end of his second year. Uh, you know, guys who are, you know, experienced, who played in, uh, you know, the tournament last year, who played in the national championship game. Um, you know, guys that aren't rattled. Right down front here. Dick Weiss. Uh, Villanova has a history of uh, graduating its kids, four-year kids. Kyle, I guess, is the only underclassman that ever left early. When you finished last season, was it a difficult decision for you? I know that you put your name in test the waters uh, in the draft. What was the ultimate decision, and what did it come down to? Um, it just came down to the, the best situation for my family and myself. And that was the biggest thing. Um, you know, anyone that knows me knows, you know, the, the first thing and my main priority, I want to take care of my parents. You know, that's the, that's the biggest thing with me. Um, and I knew, you know, I had that chance last year. Um, and if I did leave, you know, teams said they would take me. And it was, you know, it, it wasn't where I wanted to be. So you know, it wasn't just, you know, wanted, I didn't want to just get there and take care of my, my parents for a you know, a year or two, I wanted to, um, you know, have a long career in the league, and I want to take care of them for the rest of their lives. And, you know, that was ultimately the, you know, the decision for me. So when I got all that information and I just sat down and thought about it, it was an easy, easy decision. Let's go over here to the right, and we'll come back to the center. Hi, Jay Skirsky with the Buffalo News. Jalen, why, do, why does your coach call you an old soul? <laughs> um, <laughs> I just... <laughs> I think just coach, um, I, me and coach have you know, felt like we've uh, had a bond these past couple of years, and I feel like we've connected since the day he started recruiting me. And so <coughs> when, um, just going back to those days, we were always talking, we were, we were always on the same page and we kind of had the same mindset. And so I, I think that's why he just considers me an old soul. Okay, we got uh, three here. We'll start with Joe and then get some mics back here. Uh, Jalen, Wisconsin hit 13 threes last night, and Koenig hit eight. Uh, just wondered uh, how you guys uh, are planning to, uh, you know, just kind of control the arc there and, and make sure they don't uh, break th break loose again for threes. Well, I mean, yeah, we definitely got to find uh, Koenig. Uh, he's a he's a great shooter, but they're a great shooting team, and um, we're just going to have to. They're well balanced, though. They have great post game, great perimeter shooters. And we're just going to go out there, play vanilla basketball, and defend hard and rebound the ball, and really just you know play together. Uh, Tom Withers, Associated Press. Josh, what, what does concern you most about Wisconsin and how dangerous are they as an eight? Very dangerous. Um, uh, 
you see how well balanced they are, and I think that's the biggest thing. Now, if a team's just you know, all post game and you and you're able to kind of shut down their post game, you know, then um, at times it can kind of you can kind of have a little easier route. But with them, you know, they're so well balanced with with Happ and Nigel down there. Then you have Bronson, you know, out on the and, and Show Walter out there shooting threes. So the balance of that team is just um, you know it, it's going to be a challenge. So. Like Jenna said, we got to go out there and just play Villanova basketball for 40 minutes and, you know, defend and rebound and just play our butt off and, you know, see what that gets us. And, I, and if I could follow, um, Chris has been struggling with his shot recently. What kind of supporting role do you play when you have a teammate like that who's, you know, kind of lost his way a little bit? Do you Are you supportive in, uh, you know, telling him to keep shooting or do you just kind of stay away from him? Tell him to shoot. <laughs> if I, if I, tell, I tell him if I, if I pass you the ball and you open one, two step and let it fly, that, that's what he does. He He's a great shooter, and you know, when you're a great shooter, you don't you don't worry about slumps, you know. And he he's a great shooter, and you know, every you know, I just know his mindset. Every one that he's going to shoot is going to go in, and that's you know, as a great shooter, you don't you don't worry about the ones you miss. You have a short term memory, and that's how he is. So, you know, just tell him to keep shooting. I'm going to go to the back right, and then we'll come center here. Chris McKee, Sportsnet Canada. Um, you know, obviously, you win this last year. Was there like an, an aha moment or like a moment of clarity at any point, whether it be in the off season or early this year, where you're like, you know what, like I want to do this again? Um, April fifth, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that's the first time I thought about it. Um, then with the whole the, the testing the water process, when I told told coach on the twenty fourth or twenty fifth of May, that's when I had the aha moment. I said, you know, I want to do this again. So. Um, you know, that's something that we've been working towards, you know, since the summer. And uh, it's something that we got to continue to work on. Um, and we got to just keep getting, being coachable and being better. But to answer that question, uh, really, you know, May 25th, you know, when I took my name out of the draft, I, I had that aha moment. I want to do it again. Jalen, how about you? Probably the same thing. Um, I mean, I definitely didn't have the process you did last you year. <laughs> but um, I just think that, you know, we definitely had some key pieces coming back next year. Uh, we definitely had a group of young guys who are still hungry and still wanting to get better. And um, I mean, that's that's definitely in the back of our minds is you know winning another na national championship. But we want to take care of business, so I just focus on our next game uh, because that's what we did last year in the tournament. We just focus on one game at a time, and eventually we got there. Go ahead. Uh, Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. Uh, Josh, Wisconsin has a reputation as a defensive-oriented team. Uh, what kind of challenges does that defense present? And does it remind you of anybody that you played? Um, it seemed like, you know, a Cian Hall, uh, a Butler, you know, a very tough, physical, um, defensive-minded team. And, and we know that. We know that's how they play. Um, you know, we just got to be aggressive. You know, we, we can't second-guess second ourselves or get in and not try to, you know, get in the paint or – um, break down the defense and not try to score. So we just got to be aggressive. We got to play our game, play Villanova basketball, and you know let that take care of itself. So we know when you when you get to you know this late in the tournament, you know, no one's playing. You know is it is an easy win. You know everyone's a tough team, and we know that. We know um, they're going to make runs, and you know we just got to play Villanova basketball. Any other questions for either Josh or Jalen? Yeah. Um, Chris McKee, Sportsnet Canada again. Um, watching the game yesterday with you guys on the floor, there seems to be, like, you can almost kind of communicate just by looking at each other. Um, talk about sort of, you know, the closeness amongst you guys as a team, of all the teams I saw here this weekend, it, you guys sort of work together uh, as one the best. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that's just how close we are. You know, we're close on the court, we're close off the court, and that really translates to, to us playing. Um, you know, I don't know how many times Jalen would just look at me and I would just know uh, exactly what he's trying to get ahead, you know, get, get to me. So that just shows how close we are, and it shows you know, we don't care about you know, our individual success. We want each other, you know, to have success. Um, that's really about it. So when you have guys where you just genuinely love and you're just connected with on a different level, you know, you, you know what each other are trying to say. 
All right, Josh, Jalen, thanks for your time. Good Thank luck you. tomorrow. Thank you. We'll have coach right up at 3.30.
Joined by Villanova head coach Jay Wright. Uh, coach, congrats on advancing. You get Wisconsin uh, tomorrow in our second game. Go ahead and open it up for questions. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone. Let's go uh, right behind you here, on the right hand side. Sullivan, Buffalo News. Uh, Wisconsin's won more games in the tournament than any other team in the last four years. They've beaten twos, they've beaten ones. It looks like the worst eight you could run into right now. How are you and your team approaching that? Um, everywhere in this tournament, you know, teams that, that know how to win. Mount St. Mary's last night, you know, they, they, they had a great plan. They knew, knew how to win the game. So we, did, we just look at it like next game. We, and we, we love playing great teams. We really do. And uh, we look forward to it. Right down, Frank. Jay, Kevin Cooney, Calkins Media. Um, you guys played a kind of a, a shaky game against Seton Hall in the Big East tournament, responded with a great game against Creighton. Shaky game last night. What is it about your guys, though, that has seemed to respond after less than stellar performances with some of your better performances of the year? I think the guys are just uh, coachable and and uh, and humble enough to look at their performance and be honest about where where they've got to improve, um, as opposed to um, making excuses or or blowing it off at like you know. It does. It doesn't matter, you know. Our, our guys um, l looked at the last game, and I, and I think, I hope you'll see a, a better performance on tomorrow tomorrow afternoon. Right down front here. Jay Josh Verlin, City of Basketball Love. Uh, several of your players mentioned Butler as a comparison to Wisconsin. How do you view that comparison, and then how troubling is that given what Butler was able to do to you guys this year? Yeah. They they are similar in a lot of ways with with their. Um, their pack line defense, their, their physicality. Um, and, and Butler shoots threes better than people know. And Wisconsin shoots them really well, as we all saw last night. Um, it, it's, it's a very similar uh, type of game. And, and it's going to be a, it's going to be a struggle. And I actually think Wisconsin's bigger, you know, even bigger than uh, Butler. So probably even tougher. But let's, you know, hope we learn from those games. Go right down front here. Uh, Bob Ford, Philadelphia Inquirer. Jay, uh, a Hap presents a, a unique set of challenges for a big, and uh, with his skill set, not a, so, not something you see every day, right. not something you practice against every day or work against. Yep. Uh, tell me about that that the challenge that you see for for your guys specifically with Hap. They're, but they've got good bigs, but him specifically. Yeah, he he's got the best hands of uh, of any player. Uh, of his size we've played against we should, and and, uh, and also the best feet so it, it, individually if you took the best feet or the best hands he's got them so then put them together in the same guy right that, that's, that's a really tough matchup in that he can score in there but he passes extremely well out of there and he can if he's got size he can score over you and if you have size on him he can score around you with his ball handling he's a great ball handler um, he's just, he's it's a really tough matchup, man, and and, uh, and and it's what really makes them good is, is that he he can score on you and he can play like a point guard and get he can get um, Koenig and, and Showalter threes himself. Let's go over here, Mark. Uh, Mark Tracy, New York Times. It was just in the locker room. Uh, I actually don't know who won, but your guys were huddled around a phone, uh, rooting for Seton Hall, uh, their, their conference rival, of course. Uh, and I'm just wondering if you could speak a little about, you know, what kind of, for fans and for people like you who are interested in it, what, what the NCAA tournament brings in terms of a fan experience, especially compared to some other sports events, and maybe especially, especially compared to, you know, something like the NBA playoffs, which are the same sport, but it's a kind of different feel. Yeah. I, I think the, what's unique about the NCAA tournament is everybody in the country um, is feels a part of it, and everybody fills out their bracket, and everybody kind of connects to a team or two, and then uh, you, no matter who you are, and um, it's it's I think it's, it's become almost a holiday, you know, an extended holiday in our country. It's I think it's the best sporting event in our country um, in terms of bringing our whole country together, and um, 
And, and then, then you have the inside part of it with the passionate fans that are connected to their schools and follow them on their ride, you know, and states and cities that just take on the school, even if it's not their school. I just think it's one of the most unique and, and, and really most entertaining uh, sporting event in our country. Let's go over here. Uh, Jay, go ahead. Hi, hi Jay. Uh, Jay Skirsky with the Buffalo News. Uh, Jalen was up here earlier and, and said that you referred to him as an old soul. I was wondering what gave him that quality in your eyes. He's he's really mature for a twenty year old. He's um, sometimes I think more mature than me. Um, and during games, I can I get more um, emotional and, and sometimes out of control than he does. You know, he'll come to me and say, "We got this, coach. We're all right. We're all right, coach." You know, he looks at every practice like a coach. He dissects everything we do, um, and. Uh, and he looks at the game like a, like an old school you know an old school guy, you know like like one of those NBA guys from the 1980s, you know just an intelligent, um, skill oriented game. I, I, I love all of that about him. And to follow up on that, is that why there was a trust level uh, on your part? You know he had two offensive fouls last night, I think in the first half, but you didn't go away from him or anything. Like you you know you were confident that he'd make the right decision when he got into the lane. Exactly, you know. Uh, and last year, we, you know, we started him out on a, as a freshman on a really uh, experienced team um, because he, he acts like a guy that's been in four NCAA tournaments, even though he's only been in one. Uh, but he, but he, he handles everything like he's been here, you know, four times. And, and um, it, that's, that's the old soul. He just acts like a really experienced person. Let's go back, uh, Senator, and we'll come over to Dean. State Journal. Jay, uh, Nigel Hayes has been on the big stage for a long time. You've probably seen him for years. How do you think he's developed? I mean, as his game has developed, and, and he seems to be playing quite well right now. What kind of a matchup issue is he? Yeah, he, he's a he's a nightmare matchup, and and sometimes when uh, you, you've been in college basketball for four years, in in the regular season, you know you, you realize at some point, okay, the NCAA tournament's coming up. That's 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 the big show, and it kind of looks to me that's what he did. When the NCAA tournament hit, he's he's ready to go. And in and, and the Big Ten tournament also. Um, he, he's uh, developed as a passer, decision maker, and shooter. You know, he, when he first came in, he's kind of a rugged, um, you know, aggressive guy, energy guy. Now he, he, he's uh, just a complete basketball player. He can shoot it from three, he can drive it, he passes it, he posts up. He's a great defender on the perimeter and the post. It's pretty complete. It's, too, it's pretty scary how I just – describe those two guys and they're on the same team, right? <laughs> it's a good team. Dana, you still right there? And then we'll go over to Joe. Hi, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Yeah, this Dana. time last year, Jay, you had to get out of this game to be a success outwardly. What do you have to do in this game to be a success outwardly? That's a good question, Dana. Um, I don't. I don't know. Like I. I think. Um, I think there's varying opinions, um, publicly, um, on where probably this team would have to get to the Final Four to be a. Um, you know, you're a one seed. You're supposed to get to the Final Four, get out of your bracket. You know, um, that's probably what we'd have to be to be a success. And as you know, we we, we accept that. We'll take it. Uh, we're we're not going to define ourselves that way, but we do get it. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Jay, uh, we all know Wisconsin's known for their defense, and their numbers are always great. And I mean, you guys' numbers aren't that much different than they are. Um, w w what do you feel about the way your defense has played this year, and what is unique about how you play defense? I think we've gotten better uh, towards the end of the year here, Joe. I, I think in that Seton Hall game in the Big East tournament, our defense saved us. You know, we, we, we couldn't score. I think last night, second half, our defense saved us. Um, and, and we take pride in it. Um, I, we, we play a lot differently defensively than Wisconsin, and we take more chances. We trap more. We press more. Uh, we change up defenses more. They, they are uh, really, really solid and, and physical and, and locked in. Um, and and uh, it's, it's really different styles. It really is. And, and, uh, 
But it, as you said, you look at the numbers, we're both trying to accomplish the same thing. They, re they rebound well, uh, they hold their opponents to low percentage, and, uh, and they try to take away threes. I do, I do. I, w I wish it wouldn't be that way, I, but I think they're going to be able to do that to us. I've learned over the years, you can try, but against those real good teams, usually doesn't work. You better, better figure out how to play in their grind. Mark. Mark Herman from Newsday. Jay, Mark. Wisconsin comes to mind as a team that can really shoot threes. A lot of teams are, everybody is. Yeah. Can you describe how that has evolved as a strategy since you've been coaching since your days at Hofstra? Yeah. It is. Defenses, um, defenses have really changed, and defensive concepts have really changed since, since even I was an assistant coach, um, in that you, you, we were all so help-oriented and, and protect the paint and don't give up easy baskets. And now sometimes you give up an easy basket and you say, thank God it wasn't a three. So you, it is, it's a completely different defensive philosophy, and, and the guys of um, our era have had to adjust a lot. The, um, the guys, the, the younger head coaches right now are, they came up that way. And it's kind of interesting um, to, to see some of the things they do because they come into the game defending the three-point line. Let's go right down front. Steven Brooks, CNHI Sports Indiana. Jay, I've just been asking all the coaches, um, with the NIT experimenting with the four-quarter, Format. Uh, what's your opinion there? Are you in favor of the game moving that way, or and why or why not? You know, I I, I don't know yet. I, I'm I, so that, I guess I would say I'm I'm not in favor yet, but I'm really interested in seeing how this works. Um, women's basketball went this year for the first year, yep. and I didn't get to our our women's coach is a, is a really bright guy and he's a longtime coach. I want to talk to him about that in the off season. Um, but I am interested in it. it it's, I, I do like, I would like to see the game be the same internationally, NBA, college. I, w I would like to see it be the same game as, or as close as possible. Let's go uh, back, back corner. Chris again. McKee, Sportsnet Canada. Um, you guys were in a dogfight yesterday at halftime and you came out in a completely different gear. What was the message to your guys at halftime? And they obviously seemed to respond to it. You know, for a good story, I'd love to tell you I went in there and ripped them, and you know they all came out fired up. But I really didn't. I, you know, I just I just sensed, as I said earlier, we had a little nerves. I sensed we were a little bit um, taken back by their speed and quickness. And they did a great. You got to give them credit. They did a great job of. Um, holding the ball till late in the possession, right? And then letting their little guards go and create plays and they were and it was working. So we didn't score until about 14 minutes to go for the first half and there was only about seven or eight possessions. So they just they just had a great game plan. It was working for a while and we just had to stick to ours and eventually it worked out. That's really all we did. I wish I could give you a better story. Jay, when you look at Wisconsin film, obviously they play well through the Big Ten tournament well last night but they struggled going into the Big Ten so what do you and your coaching staff kind of focus on more where they struggled two three weeks ago or what they're doing now that's a good question we always and I, I, that's an interesting question for all coaches we always look at the last game because we feel like coaches um, you know, if they played well in the last game they're gonna do a lot of the things they did before if they didn't play well in the last game they're going to they're going to change some things, you know. Um, so we spend a lot more time on the last game, but then we go back in in, in importance uh, less importance the further they are from this game. Tom, uh, Tom Withers, Associated Press. Jay, you spoke about this a little bit last night. Um, Chris and his shooting. You said you've spoken to him a lot about that and keep encouraging him to keep firing away. How does he respond to that? What kind of feedback does he give you in those exchanges? He's great, man. He, I, a lot of guys, we, we have a term, shoot him up, sleep in the streets. Chris lives, Chris lives that better than anybody we've ever had. Uh, Scotty Reynolds was one of the best, um, and, and Chris is in that category. They just, they don't fear a two for 13 night. I've been asked a lot, 
by a lot of people, good basketball um, journalists that I know were around for a long time, to say like, oh, what about Chris? What about Chris? Is he going to be okay? He, it doesn't bother him at all. And that's what I love about him, and I want all of our guys to be like that. Sometimes the younger guys, you know, if they have a couple, miss a couple shots, they don't want to take the next shot. And, and we don't want them to play that way. If we, we, we tell them, if we have you out there on the court, we have confidence in you to shoot. So, I, really, he's the least of my worries. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you, guys. Three fifty five for Wisconsin student athletes.
Okay, we're joined now by Wisconsin student athletes Nigel Hayes, Bronson Koenig, Zach Showalter. Uh, gentlemen, congrats on uh, advancing, playing Villanova in our second game uh, tomorrow afternoon. Go ahead and uh, open it up to questions. Uh, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Jerry, go ahead and get us started. As to be for Bronson, uh, Jerry Sullivan, the Buffalo News. You guys, over the last year of senior, you've been on teams that won a couple of being a couple of number one seeds, what is it about this program that allows you to really rise up in these moments? Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest, but I know that, you know, ever since um, me and Nigel came in as freshmen, uh, we've always been a very uh, resilient team. You know, we don't get rattled when we're down, kind of like Villanova, just play with a lot of poise. Um, and that just comes from having a lot of confidence in, you know, ourselves and, uh, us as a team. <clears throat> go ahead, Todd. We can ask the same oh, thing yeah, go, yeah, for Nigel, ahead, too, since you, know, you are the leading scorer in the nation this term at the last four years. You might have some insight. Um, as to do with our preparation, our coaches do an extremely good job of scouting. We also do a good job of trying to stick to the fundamentals and do the little things. So that's what gets you championships. It's not, you know, of course, there's going to be plays made. I mean, he's the, the poster child for making spectacular plays. But there's also a lot of the little plays that you don't see, which is what Showy's responsible for. So Bronson gets all the, the attention. And Showy's the one in the background doing all the diving, uh, playing the great defense for us. And when you put all that together on one team and we're all, you know, playing together, playing for one another, you can do <coughs> special things. Tom Withers, Associated Press. Nigel, through all this tournament experience over the last four years, what is the most valuable lesson you guys have learned? Uh, how to remain cool, calm, and collected during moments of either low points in the game or high points, knowing that you may get up, but it may not be over yet. You know, you still have game left to play, and even if another team goes in a run or you get down, that again, there's more time left. You can come back, and we've seen We've seen both sides of it. Um, going back to our, our first time in the tournament, really, when we played Oregon and Milwaukee, we were on pace to lose by 20 plus, and then, you know, we kept our composure and we were able to fight back and win. Go ahead, Mark. Mark Herman for Newsday in New York. This is for all of you. What, was, what were the emotions like on, on senior night at, uh, in Wisconsin? And what has the experience of being in school all these years meant to all of you? Zach, you want to start? I think it was it was a very special night for all of us. Um, obviously, this this group of four seniors has been in a lot of been in a lot of big games in our career and uh, really got a lot from Wisconsin. Um, so I think we it was a big night. Especially we wanted to get a, a big win uh, going into the tournament play, and I think it kind of started to turn our, our season around a little bit. <clears throat> well, I think at that point we had lost maybe five of six games or so, and uh, having that <clears throat> our final game at home against a really good Minnesota team, we knew that, you know, that could really propel, propel us forward um, going on into the uh, Big Ten tournament and just kind of use that as, um, just kind of use that going forward into, you know, uh, March and April, hopefully. Nigel? It was, uh, it was extremely emotional, not that, you know, everyone was in tears or anything, but just knowing that it's, it's an end to something that's been very, very good to you. You've made some great memories there, even with the wins and losses, the connection that you've made with people, the experiences that we've had. So we're extremely, you know, appreciative. Fortunately for us, we've had a lot more wins and losses, so it's been pretty good. But, um, you know, knowing that that's an, it's an end of a chapter in our life, and, you know, obviously you don't want to see it move on, but, it, you know, it has to. So now we're just trying to change that focus from that, use all that experience and all that time we've had and try and do something special in our last year. Um, just change as a person, able to mature on and off the court, um, able to develop yourself again, not necessarily just basketball wise, but also as a person, you change, you know, your beliefs, thought processes, things that go on in your everyday life. And you also are able to make new connections with people, um, able to actually play school. You know, he likes to call us student athletes a lot. So, um, all of us will be graduating. So you can do a lot of, um, great things. And that's the beauty of staying in school. 
Let's go up front here. Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. Nigel, uh, Coach Wright said you had the look of a senior that doesn't want to want your career to end. Uh, you're working on a string of three straight double doubles here. Uh, what's what's going on that you've been able to step it up even more than usual uh, in this last little stretch? Just that sense of urgency that you have. Again, I've been fortunate with Brownson and Shelley to have been on some teams with older guys. We've been fortunate enough to make some long runs. And once you see that run end, you know, the look on guys' faces, the, the face in the jerseys, the tears, the pain that you can hear. And I, was, I saw that at a young age, and I you know, want to make sure I do everything in my power to, to not let that happen. I even you know, mentioned to the guys, you know, having to be willing to, you know, to die for the opportunity to play a national championship. I know it may sound extreme, but you know, I'd rather go out there in the game and give everything I have and can't move with a win than come out of there feeling a little bit better and with a loss, because a loss will feel a million times worse than the amount of pain that you can do with a win. We're going to go uh, all the way in the back left corner there. Zach, Chris, rode the bus over here with you from the hotel <laughs> earlier. Uh, with, with the tight turn, and you guys talked about what you wanted to kind of shore up from last night, how do you balance today working on what you want to do better than you did yesterday and getting ready for the number one overall seed? Uh, yeah, we went over, I mean, Naja talked about our, our scouting reports and our coaches and getting us prepared for these games. Uh, so this morning, slept in a little bit, got a good a good scouting report in from Coach Moore. Um, and just handling ball screens and stuff like that a little better. Um, <coughs> don't want to get into too many details about what, what our plan is, obviously. But um, that's why I think, like Nigel said, why we have success is we're really, we pay attention to details and stuff like that. So I think that'll help us and we'll be ready to go on Saturday. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, Zach, uh, they were talking before, uh, two of their losses are to Butler, which is a team that plays somewhat similar to you guys, tough physical defense and grinds it out on offense a little bit. Uh, is that encouraging to you guys, or do you not even consider that and just play your own game? It's encouraging, but I don't think you want to read into it too much. Um, I think we'll, we'll play our style of play, uh, no matter who's standing on the other side. Um, I think Villanova is a team that's similar to us, and uh, they've been in they've been in big games before, and they know what it's like to play in these situations. Um, so it's going to be a it's going to be a heck of a game uh, on Saturday, and I'm excited for it. Any other questions? Okay, not seeing any, gentlemen. Thanks for your time. Good luck tomorrow. Coach guard up at uh, 415.
now by uh, University of Wisconsin head coach Greg Gard. Uh, coach, first, uh, congrats on advancing to play Villanova tomorrow. I guess whatever congratulations you can get to go play the number one seed, but uh, congrats. Great for parting gift. <laughs> yeah, great. You're still playing, right? Right, so. exactly. Uh, we'll open it up to questions at this time, and we'll go ahead and get started right in the back left there. Uh, Greg, Josh Verlin from City of Basketball Love. Uh, several Villanova players mentioned Butler as a comparison to you guys, and Butler obviously beat them twice during the year. I was wondering if you had any chance to see either of those games or see Butler, and just if you think there's any comparison there as well. Yeah, I have watched uh, Butler play them, and obviously, um, I mean, comparatively wise, I haven't played. We haven't played Butler in a few years, so. Uh, I think there's probably some comparisons. I think there's also some comparisons between us and Villanova, specifically defensively, uh, just watching them, how physical they are, how they uh, do a great job of, of uh, really playing a team-oriented defense and really low to the ball pretty well. And, and uh, you know, defensively, they're very impressive. Everybody talks about what Hart and Jenkins and Brunson do offensively and how they run the show, but defensively, they're very good as well. And I think that's where you draw some comparisons. Um, whether it's Butler, Notre Dame, another team that's here, um, just how they play so well together. A reminder to the media that you're allowed one follow-up, and if you are following up, please make sure you have a microphone when you ask that question. That being said, Dana, what? go ahead. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Greg, I asked a, a few coaches this, and, and your program fits the bill a bit as well. Um, in the era of one and done, um, when players stick around more at schools such as yourselves, is that – more a, a formula for a repeat champion looking at Villanova when you've got that experience? Do you think that the things are changing a little bit? Well, I think the experience definitely helps. And, but we've all, you could look at the other side and see teams that have won uh, and done that with one and done players. I think, you know, we're probably both in, in similar boats from a standpoint of we have guys that stay for the majority of their time, um, maybe not all the time, but for the most part. And, they're, and you have, uh, you know, two programs that develop pretty well and they get better as time goes on. And you usually look at their roster. I went through it last night or early this morning when I got back to the hotel and I saw a lot of RSs in front of names, meaning red shirt. And I'm going to go back and even research that deeper because that's always been a, a big part of our program is when we can red shirt guys and, and play with older guys. Uh, that's helped in our consistency. And I'm sure Jay would say the same thing in terms of him sustaining what he's done there. Uh, when you can have older guys, for the most part, on the floor every year, that really helps. Hey, Greg. Bob Ford from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, how have you seen the development of how teams have chosen to defend Hap as he has developed as a player? I mean, he brings such a unique skill set, obviously, with his elusiveness down there. I mean, I guess you try to deny, and then you've seen a lot of doubles to make him get rid of it, too. Do you anticipate some of that from Villanova and uh, – how has he handled getting that much attention uh, that he wasn't getting maybe earlier in his career? Well, he's, he's gotten better in terms of handling double teams over the last month, six weeks. He, he struggled with it early, uh, I think. And then as he improved in terms of handling that, we also didn't take advantage of it on the backside, whether it was backside threes. We missed a lot of wide open shots earlier in the year when they were that first became a, a, a scheme against us. And then secondly, we also missed the opportunity to throw it back in uh, on the back side of the, of the off, or back side of the defense. So it, he's also obviously gotten better, but also the guys around him have gotten better at taking advantage of what's there. We've tweaked a few things. We've drilled a lot of things uh, to try to help him through that. Um, so it's, uh, you know, he's probably seen about every conceivable thing you can do with five guys on the floor in terms of where the traps are coming from, whether it's a bottom, whether it's a top, whether it's been same side wing, whether it's been post to post. Um, it's just a matter of making decisions, being strong with the ball, not panicking. And, uh, you know, he's had to grow through it. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to work with it. And we work it about every week. Um, you know, but it's also in large part due to the play around him, too, if guys can help him out and not put him on an island and, and uh, change sides of the floor. And, and then when you make shots against it, that's, that's the – the ultimate goal is to try to make them teams pay for committing an extra guy towards him. Let's go to the back right corner. Coach, John Scott, Spectrum News here in Buffalo. You mentioned it the other day, but can you elaborate a little bit on what you remember about your experience winning a national title here in 1995 in Buffalo? Well, um, I'm in my second year of college coaching. Um, I'm still an undergrad student at UW-Platteville, and uh, 
you know, we get beat in the Sweet 16 the year before, and then we come back and go undefeated. So I got spoiled right off the bat in terms of thinking it was always going to be like that, how easy it was to march to a Final Four and have an undefeated team. Um, but the experience here in Buffalo was terrific. Obviously, there I am at 24 at the time, and you have that type of an, an experience. And I think that what those experiences at Platteville taught me, and, and Coach Ryan was always talking to me about this, that divisions didn't matter. It, you know, don't get caught up in the Roman numeral behind the school or what division you're in. That the the experiences we can have um, at Division Three were, you know, uh, maybe not the same stage as Division One, but the experiences for the student athlete and the excitement and the drama and the uh, the euphoria with it, those were great, great memories. And obviously, the Buffalo, the national championship here, prior to the to the two we won in Salem in '98 and '99, um, you know, that's those are vivid memories uh, for me. And uh, that was kind of where it all started in terms of my college coaching. Do you ever look back when you're on this grand stage and think back to it started for you on that smaller stage? Yeah, and I think that helps keep this in perspective that it's still a game. There's still young men out there trying to play really well, and, and there's so much attention given it, given to it uh, from the outside uh, that it, you keep reminding yourself what it was like then, um, how, what an innocent experience it was for those guys back in 95. And I uh, actually talked to one of the players that was on the team two nights ago. Saul Phillips is now the coach at Ohio University, and he was a senior on that team in 95. And just the remembering back to how they how we rushed the floor that whole journey through the year going undefeated um just the like i said the innocence of it of what it's like and i was close to their age you know those are guys are 22 23 uh, and i'm 24 still um finishing up my undergrad so um it uh it really puts it in perspective of what the experience is like for the, like for the student athletes let's go bottom left tom Oates, wisconsin state journal Greg Nigel's working on a string of three straight double doubles here. Um, is this just a senior, you know, feeling the end of his career coming on and wanting to prolong it, or has he made some changes in his game, or maybe have you made some changes in how you're using him? Well, I think it's it's probably all three. I think we've um, he's attacked the paint a little more ferociously, uh, gotten better at trying to play around the rim a little bit more, and I think that's been a year long process. We have done a few things schematically a little bit different over the last three weeks or so to try to maybe emphasize it even more, take advantage of of what they were doing with Hap um, specifically. And but I also think he's, you know, it's I, I've said it several times. Seniors hear the clock ticking; they see the sands going through the hourglass, knowing there's not much time left, regardless of how we finish it out. It's coming to an end here pretty soon. So I would say it's probably a combination of all three, but probably. Number one, he understands what time of year it is. And number two, he's made a conscious effort to take advantage of what his advantage is. And, and that's basically playing 15 feet and in and, and using his skill set and trying to create those matchup or getting getting defenses caught in some of those matchup advantages. I'm going to go all the way to the back, Coach. Coach Dale Ryman from WSAW. When the team was struggling late in the season, they were pressing, and it was against teams that maybe they were favored against. The national perception tomorrow night is you guys are playing a Villanova team that you're not supposed to beat. Will that help the guys go out there and play maybe more relaxed, give it all out there, nothing to lose? Well, I, I don't know if uh, – I think once the ball goes up, you know, guys just play. And I think sometimes that's that there's more made of that type of scenario in terms of who's loose, who's who the pressure's on, who's not – favored that, that that really I think is irrelevant in players minds uh, I think they just once that ball goes up like I said uh, they really all that gets flushed out and uh, you just play for the 40 minutes and I think during our our stretch I don't know so much if we pressed as you know we played some teams that have played very well against us we were not in sync specifically offensively some of that was due to Koenig being hobbled a little bit and that put us out of sync even when he came back we weren't quite in sync as we've been over the last two weeks. Um, so it, it's a combination of things. I, I don't want to discredit the other team's efforts and what they did. And we also saw teams that were fighting for postseason uh, appearances. We went to Michigan State when they needed to win. Uh, we were playing Iowa, who was still trying to fight for their postseason lives. So 
Uh, I think uh, Northwestern, same example. Um, so I don't want to discredit what the other teams did and how well they played against us. Um, but I also don't want to put it all the light on that it was our guys were feeling the pressure. Hey, we didn't play well, specifically offensively. And, um, you know, we, we got back to being more in sync, and, and that's helped us. Go ahead, Mark. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. I just want to get your, some of your thoughts. What are your impressions when you watched Villanova in that classic national championship game last year? And do you as a program, do you see that in a different lens having been in a national championship game? Yeah, what I see in Villanova is a championship program type swagger. And, and I've seen it in our guys too, just from the, the benefits of being at two Final Fours. They understand what it's about and, the, and what you have to go through. And uh, also the, that air of confidence that borders arrogance. I mean, without being arrogant, you watch Villanova walk on the floor and they're very confident and, and led by Jalen Brunson, who's always been a championship level guard, even when he was back at, in Illinois at Stevenson High School. Um, he had that air about him then. And Hart carries that same type of presence about him. So uh, I, you look at that and I've seen it in our guys too. I think it's embedded in both programs. Um, what was the other part of your question? Do you see a national? Do you watch a national championship game differently, having been in one? Not really. I probably watch it less. You know, having been there and knowing that you, you know, uh, like I said, I, I don't p get caught up in a lot of the um, pomp and circumstance around it. I just lock in on the game itself and um, and try to watch that more so than all the fanfare around it. Having been there, um, usually you get to that time of year. Your tank's pretty well empty, so you're uh, trying to recharge and, and get ready for what's next. So, uh, obviously, Villanova had a heck of a year last year. They've had a fa phenomenal year this year. I think last year obviously has helped them springboard into this year, even though they lost a few guys. But those uh, guys that returned have really uh, carried the mantle pretty well. Very back uh, left corner. Coach, it's Chris Hall. How much did you expect to get from Khalil last night, and how much if you hope that carries over with your bench tomorrow? Yeah, I, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know where he was going to be at emotionally. Uh, he seemed like he was okay when I talked to him over the couple days. And uh, but Khalil's also a he, he's a tough read. Uh, he he hides his emotions pretty well for the most part, and and always he'd be a very good poker player because uh, he doesn't let you know a whole lot uh, of what's going through his mind. But I thought he was terrific last night. He was a huge boost for us. At, he was very active. Uh, we, we missed him against Michigan in the championship game. There's no doubt, specifically defensively. And uh, he had played very well at Ann Arbor a couple weeks prior, three weeks prior. So that void was evident on tape, and it was even more evident when he came back to practice last week, what he added back to us. Um, so I, I'm just happy for him because he's been through so much, um, you know, uh, hurt, and, and sorrow, not only with his cousins, but also what he's gone through with his dad. I know he's still working to try to get through that, and rightfully so. I know how it's been for me at 46, losing my dad a year and a half ago. And uh, for somebody to go through it when you're still in high school, I can only imagine how painful that's been for him. And then to add that on top of it, it's, it's a lot for a young, young person to handle. So I'm happy for him because he needed something positive, and he was definitely very positive for us last night. Last question uh, down here, front row. Stephen Brooks, CNHI Sports, Indiana. Greg, I was just, uh, I've been asking every coach here today, um, with the NIT experimenting with the four quarter format, I was just curious what your thoughts were on that and would you like to see the game move that way? Why or why not? Um, I don't know what the, I've, I've watched very little of the NIT. Um, I've watched a couple of the teams that are in it from our league, actually a little bit of Illinois, a little bit of Indiana, a little bit of Iowa, but so I don't know exactly how it's the impact it's had. I know from talking to high school coaches in the state of Wisconsin and in Minnesota, we just went to halves in the last handful of years. And the high school coaches do not want to go back to quarters. They, they really like the flow of the game in the halves uh, and the way it's set up right now. Um, so just judging from what their uh, feedback has been in both states, Minnesota's had it a little bit longer than Wisconsin, that it's been a positive move. Uh, for the game in that regard. And I probably, unless data or information tells me otherwise, uh, I would probably be fit in favor of, of keeping it how it is. And I've always been, hey, if it's not broke, why, why are we tinkering with it? Um, I think there's probably some other things in the game we can 
continue to work on rather than um, worrying about changing to quarters. Thanks, Coach. All right, appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow.